Hi everyone, this is Danai and today's video is going to be about Horowitz's stretching exercise. Horowitz obviously is probably one of the most famous pianists that have ever lived. He was an incredible musician, an incredible pianist who could just simply masterfully play the piano. And he also actually had a lot of exercises that he published, that he talked about, that he taught to his students, which usually were other very famous and amazing pianists. So he also had a big set of skills when it came to teaching and passing on the knowledge. And one of his more famous exercises is his stretching exercise. Horowitz always put a big emphasis on the importance of stretching your fingers, of stretching your hands, and the importance of stretching in between every finger. So he developed a stretching exercise that I will get into in this video. And if you're interested in seeing what this exercise entails and what I look out for when I practice it, then keep on watching. So as I already mentioned before, Horowitz's stretching exercise is very specifically geared towards stretching every single finger and the distance between every single finger. Usually when we do stretching exercises, and I also have mentioned stretching exercises on this channel before, it's all about the hand span, which is also very important. This, this span here that you can really do the line that it is as stretched as it possibly can be. But Horowitz goes one step further and actually stretches every possible opening between every single finger. So in your right hand, you start out on the middle C and stretch your fifth finger to the E. So basically you're reaching for a 10th. Once you have that, you keep both fingers pressed and then add the fourth finger on the C. So essentially your first and fourth finger are playing an octave and your fifth finger is playing the E above, so a 10th. Once you feel comfortable in that position, you add in the third finger and you place it on the A. So in relation to the thumb, one three is playing a sixth. And finally, which is the hardest step, you add in the second finger and it is playing an E. So in relation to the thumb, it's playing a third. And while you're doing all of that, all the other fingers are remaining on the keys and you are holding the keys down. So in the end, you are playing a five voice chord. In the left hand, it's exactly the same, only mirrored. So you're going to start on the middle C and then you're placing the fifth finger on the A. So you're creating the 10th. After that, you're adding the fourth finger on the C, so you have your octave. Then you're adding the third finger on the E, so in relation to the thumb, you have a sixth. And then you add the second finger on the A, so in relation to the thumb, you have a third. Now, a couple of things to look out for when playing this exercise. If you've never pressed this type of a chord before, it can be extremely uncomfortable, especially if your hand is not stretched in that way. So definitely be careful. There is no pain that is supposed to be involved. If it's really hurting, definitely stop. That is not right. If you feel a slight stretch, that is fine, of course. But the reason why you start with one five and then slowly add in the fingers is so that you can adjust your hand position accordingly. And the easiest way to master this chord is to adjust the hand position after every finger by moving it outward a little bit. So towards your outward fingers, towards the fifth, towards the fourth, towards the third. And then when you have the second, it basically comes in at a diagonal angle, not straight because you cannot do this when you play. So it has to be kind of at a diagonal angle and round fingers. Another important tip when you practice this is to make sure that your wrists are relaxed. It's a very common thing that whenever we are playing hard things with our fingers, our wrists also get tense, but that really is not helpful. On the contrary, it can be damaging 
first of all, you can actually hurt your hands and arms and wrists, but also it just simply hinders you from being able to play easily. So make sure that your wrists feel zero pressure, are not compensating any of the difficulty that your fingers are going through while doing this stretching exercise. And the third thing I want to mention is that your elbow is also relaxed. Don't compensate by putting your elbow up here or even putting your shoulders up. This entire part of your body, shoulders, elbow, arm, wrists, should be completely relaxed and not influenced by the very uncomfortable exercise that your fingers are doing. And what I do is I first place my fingers on these keys very slowly and carefully by adjusting my hand position. And after that, I try to play this chord rather quickly, not at a crazy fast tempo, but I simply press the notes at a faster speed just to make sure that I know exactly where my hand needs to go. Also, if I'm playing it at a faster tempo. that was it for this video. This is Horowitz's stretching exercise. Let me know if you knew this exercise already and if it's helpful for you and if you didn't, whether you liked it. It's a stretching exercise that I personally got into quite late within my piano journey because in the beginning I always just did the classic stretches of handspan stretching. But I must say that it is helpful and I feel that it is important for your fingers to practice these stretches as well in order to be very agile when you're playing virtuoso passages. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. You can find tons of videos on technique and on piano practice. So check them out if you're interested and I will see you again in my next video next week. Bye.